Hello, this is Benjamin with U.S. Cutter and Sign Universe Technical Support. I'll be walking you through the initial setup and installation of your new MH series, Creation Series, or Copam Vinyl Cutter. Please note, this tutorial is specifically geared for installation on a Windows-based operating system. The first thing that we're going to do is download and install SignBlazer, which is a free design and cutting program. To download it, simply navigate to uscutter.com and click on the support link at the top of the page. We now want to click on the full SignBlazer Elements install link located under the popular files section. In addition to finding this file here, we can locate the file by clicking on Downloads, then Software, Downloads, and Updates, and here it is again, next to the SignBlazer instruction manual. Let's click on the link and begin the download. We're going to choose to save the file to our desktop so that we can find it easily once the download is completed. Now that the download is complete, let's double click the icon and begin the installation. We're going to click next to get the install going. At this point, you'll see a warning that you can only perform the installation on one computer. This is actually not correct. At this time, SignBlazer is not being developed or supported, and you can install it on as many computers as you like. Ideally, we should be installing SignBlazer on the computer that will be running the cutter. So let's select Yes, and then click Next. We're going to accept the end user license agreement and continue to click until it asks us to choose the model of our cutter from a list. Select your cutter from the list and click Next. For the sake of our tutorial, I'm going to choose the MH721. It's also worth mentioning here that if you have an MH871, you can simply select the 721, just as I have, as they both use the same drivers. After we click Next, we're going to be asked if we want to install the FTDI driver. This is the driver that will be used by the computer to communicate with your cutter. Before clicking Yes, please make sure your cutter is not connected to the computer. The next screen asks us to choose the communications port where the cutter will be connected. We're not going to worry about any of these settings just yet, so go ahead and click Next through the remainder of the Options windows to complete the installation. If the black driver installation window doesn't disappear on its own, we can just click on it and then hit enter. The install is now complete, but don't click the finish button just yet. Before we run the program, uncheck the option box to launch SignBlazer elements before clicking on the finish button. On your desktop, you will see the new SignBlazer elements icon. We're going to make a quick adjustment to the settings so that the program won't try to update in vain every time you run it. Let's right click on the icon and select properties. On the shortcut tab you'll see target with C program files, cutting technologies, etc. and it'll say sb.exe at the end, identifying where the actual application is located on your computer. We're going to add the letters NT to the end of the target location so that it will read sbnt.exe. The program would work just fine if we skipped this step. We would just have to deal with the automatic updater launching every time we open SignBlazer, and we'd like to try and avoid that. So let's click OK and then double click to open the program. Now when it asks you to register, you can fill out the form with whatever information you want and click OK. This information doesn't go anywhere, and we're only filling it out so that the program will not ask us for it again.
Because SignBlazer is no longer being developed or supported, there's no registration or activation code required. It's used in trial mode uh, every time that we run the program, and it will always be fully functional. So now that we have SignBlazer open, we need to make sure that the program is properly set up to communicate with both our computer and our cutter. At this point, we want to have our cutter fully connected to the computer, plugged in, and turned on. Let's navigate to the device manager on our computer. If you're using Windows XP, you can get there by clicking on the Start menu, select the Control Panel, and then click on System. From there, you want to select the Hardware tab, and then choose the Device Manager. For those of us using Windows Vista and Windows 7, we need to click on the Windows Orb, and then select the Control Panel. From there, we can select the Device Manager. If your cutter is plugged in and turned on, you should see a listing titled Ports. Click to expand the ports listing. You should see something like Communications Port COM1 and ECP Printer Port LPT1. If you have your cutter connected with a USB cable, you'll see something like USB Serial Device. You can be certain of which COM port the PC has assigned it by unplugging the cutter from the computer. You should see the port disappear. Plug it back in. The one that reappears is the cutter's COM port. The COM number should be between 1 and 8. Right-click on the port and click on Properties, then click on Port Settings. You want the Flow Control option near the bottom to be set to Hardware. Click OK. If you don't see the ports listing, or if you get USB not recognized, your cutter is not connected or not being recognized by the computer. You'll need to A, reinstall the driver, which can be found at US Cutter's support site, or B, try connecting the cable to a different place on the computer. If the cutter is still not recognized, try a different cable altogether. Now we have to make sure that the COM port SignBlazer is sending the cut jobs out to is the same one that our computer has just issued to the cutter. In SignBlazer, this can be found by clicking the Cutter button at the top of the design screen and then clicking on the Setup button. So if in the Device Manager, USB Serial Device COM3 appeared when you plugged in the cutter, you want the output device to be set to the same port. The cutter listed above should be yours, and the output device should match the COM port in the Device Manager. At this point, all we need to do now is send a test cut to the cutter to establish that we've got proper communication. This concludes our tutorial on setting up SignBlazer with our MH, Creation, or Copam cutter. Thanks from US Cutter and Sign Universe, and we'll see you next time.